Hi folks, welcome to Monday's edition of the iWrite Radio podcast, videocast. I've got Stuart Lockhead with me today. Hey there. And Jimmy is in his mobile studio. Jimmy Hutton, I'm Nori right. Stewart. Uh, we're going to have a quick touch on the press conference. We're going to talk about the use of statistics on the BBC. Um, Ruth Wisher has an interesting piece. Um, let's let's go with the presser first because I think it'll be short and sweet today. Um, what did you think, Jimmy? Did you see it? I did not see it, mate. No, I forgot to bother this the day. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Um, it was a world record for shortness. Shortness is that the right word? It was very short. Uh, and uh, what did we find out that uh, the review tomorrow about the levels at um, the different parts of the country are in. We got virtually no clues apart from the fact that Aberdeenshire has got problems with food processing plants, so that's about all. Uh, we're the pilot in testing in some tricky areas. Um, questions about what was it? All dates are speculative when it comes to vac vaccinations being launched. Uh, I don't have much more. What else have I got here? Radio 4. Who's, uh, oh, Christine Lavelle at The Sun tried to catch him out with, Did you, you said you made mistakes, First Minister, when you were talking about care homes, but uh, she didn't get caught out. Um, the only bad thing was that Mark McLaughlin of The Times, the current top hyena hack at the moment, tried to suggest that what Jason Leach had said about a, an old lady who wanted to have a glass of champagne with her boyfriend who, who isn't in the care home with her in the garden would, uh, was a bad idea. I missed a bit about the boyfriend. Yeah, that was him trying to get his um, headline SNP send vulnerable old folk out into the snow to die headline. Well, the thing mm -hmm. was, Jason Leach was attacked, you know, and you know how he's blunt, shall we say. Uh, and he suggested this woman had sent him a message and she's an old wifey and she was blunt and she watched, she had a boyfriend and she wanted to meet him at Christmas Day and share a, bottle, a glass of champagne. And would it be all right to have it in the garden? And he said, yeah. So that was the excuse for this hyena to try and cook up some bad story about Jason Leach. Well, that, that was his original question. Was it Friday? I repeated it today. Um, was the headline that was manufactured out of Jason Leach's answer. Um, so Jason Leach got a chance to answer him back. Um, I think, well, the other interesting thing Jimmy would be interested in is that Jason Leach was admitting it looked like Edinburgh numbers were going down sufficiently so it could be looked at for a yeah. move. Well, they've, they've got, let's be honest, they desperately don't want to open Edinburgh up to Tier 2. But I'm assuming that they're not getting enough positive tests with all the extra testing they're doing in Edinburgh. I mean, Jesus, Leith Library and the Usher Hall are now COVID testing centres. So they've certainly ramped up the testing in Edinburgh over the last few weeks and they clearly can't be getting enough positive tests to justify keeping us in tears here, I don't think. Oh, well, yeah, that was, it. sorry, that was, should have been the headline. The fact is that they, they didn't get the usual number of tests reported for on a Monday. It was yeah, only the, 300 and odds, wasn't it? There was a glitch in the information uh, getting to them, so we can expect uh, bigger numbers Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, only 369 positives. That would normally have been 900 or 1,000. So. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, no doubt that'll be grasped by the BBC, which brings us quite neatly on to Jimmy's. Yeah, I noticed um, GMTV this morning. Um, Nicholas Sturgeon was interviewed with Piers Morgan and his dumbass sidekick. And they repeated the lie, basically, that Andrew Marr went with yesterday by selectively picking four weeks when England was in the middle of a lockdown and comparing the death rate with England at that point to Scotland overall. Um, it was also the exact same fake stat was used by um, Andrew Bolton on Sky News to have a pop at Drew Hendry. I'm just wondering if um, 
Her Majesty's Department for Filthy Slimy Tricks under Michael Gove sent instructions this morning to everybody to start their campaign now. It's time to put us back in our box and the quickest way to do it is to let Andrew Marr's fake stats be used as your first big stick to hit us with. I think I do think that this is going to be the start of a lot of selective information being used to beat the SNP with. They seem to have got away with it, even though there was a huge backlash on social media about it. James I mean, Kelly, uh, James Kelly he, he, I'll give you a nice quote. A rather pathetic impression is given of a state broadcaster just eagerly waiting for months until the first opportunity came along to claim on a thin technical basis that Scotland is performing worse than England and then pouncing in a less than subtle manner. Nice writing. Aye, aye. Uh, and well, very I've, I've got something to show you, chaps. This is today, this uh, Douglas Ross was given the Bash the SNP spot on BBC. And I have to tell you that I was pleasantly surprised by the interviewer's reaction. They asked him a question um, and Douglas Ross went into full political we hate the SNP mode. So I'm going to show you this clip, guys. Well, I'm now joined by the leader of the Why Scottish Conservatives, playing? Douglas Ross. So, Douglas Ross, I mean, how much faith should we put in these mass testing initiatives that we're seeing being rolled out from today? Well, if I can come to that in a moment, Graham, but I do just have to note that there has been a, a clear emphasis from the First Minister over the weekend and this afternoon, yet again speaking about independence and her uh, aim to have a second independence referendum referendum as early so as... I do want to, to talk about the public health issues. So on the testing that has been announced today, do you think that it is value for money? Because a lot of scientists don't believe that that is the case. Well, I will answer your point, Graham. but I do think a, a number of people will be watching this thinking they don't... You know, sure, the BBC we're not, don't we're stop not, the we're not a political programme. I can't, I can't allow points. you to make political points in the same way that we don't allow the First Minister to make political points during her briefing. Oh, that, that's good. I'll, I'll be watching to make sure... Well, Graham Stewart makes a change, eh? Well, the interesting thing about that was um, we're not a political programme. I can't allow you to make political points. Yeah, well, that the was same new. way we don't allow. So is there some agreement between the First Minister and the BBC with their daily um, could broadcasts? Be. I mean, it could be. She'd probably been dealt. Yeah, it certainly suggests that when they said they weren't going to cover the daily briefing, it certainly suggests that at that point, because they brought it back, what, within a week? Suggests that there was yeah. an agreement made. I mean, the First Minister uh, very rarely goes political. She doesn't use it as a soapbox, very rarely. Well, the, clever, the more clever of the jackals um, in our mainstream media find a political question to hook onto a coronavirus issue. Uh, there's a few of them tried that one. But uh, it's it's interesting because right from the start, Nicola Sturgeon stated that it wasn't going to be political. It was about reporting on the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes me wonder about Graeme Stewart. I mean, he's low profile, but he's been there presenting and doing politics. And uh, he's the main man at the BBC. He has been there for a long time. Well, late, later on in the interview, um, he asked Douglas Ross if he agrees with his mates at Westminster, the MPs that are against lockdown. And Douglas Ross uses that political angle, turns around and says, that sounds like a political question to me, and just refuses to answer it, es essentially moves on to what he wants to talk about. So it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. But it, w it was interesting. Um, I can't ever remember the BBC being quite so explicit. Well, let's be honest, mate. Since they introduced the bash, the SNP spot, they must have had a plethora of complaints. Because Dougie Ross is getting it every two or three days. And he has been particularly political. Which so give, just... gives me the opportunity to mention my bugbear at the moment, that um, the last spokesman 
uh, on any of these political programs these days is always the opposition to the SNP. SNP are not getting the last word these days, which they used to do quite quite frequently. Jimmy, you got anything else that caught your eye? Um, no, not particularly me. Um, the, J the Joanna Cherry thing on Twitter this morning, um, again, times beautifully. She's she's dealt with this conference really quite smartly with her article on Friday morning. Um, the fake Times article that she managed to rip apart on Saturday morning and then this one today, um, basically putting Nicola Sturgeon right on the spot, interestingly enough. Nicola's got a speech today. This is the accusation she's making that Alan Smythe's boyfriend or ex-boyfriend, I'm not sure, had gone into Alan Smythe's private email and picked out and photosho uh, not Photoshop, sorry, screen grabbed messages that were um, messages from Joanna Cherry asking Alan Smythe to put a collar on Jordan and Aye. and the way he was talking about people in the SNP. Yeah, it's not the first time, mate. This we chat, Alan Smith's boy toy, was, um, I suppose I should say allegedly, um, <clears throat> leaked information when he was working in a MSP's office that was detrimental to that SMP, sorry, that MSP. And obviously we can't say that he, for certain that he did it, but he lost his job straight after the leak happened. And it kind of suited his wee campaign that he's got going on for um, gender identity and what have you. Um, he's had a pop at various MPs and M MSPs in the past. Frankly, as a misogynist, we get it's the it's that thing that we never talk about when we discuss gay men. He's one of the percentage of gay men that absolutely hate women, that just hate them and cannot help but be misogynist little shits every time a woman is mentioned. Um, but folk never talk about that. And nothing will get done because Mr. Smith is perfectly happy, like any middle-aged man, I suppose. He's having these midlife crises and he's perfectly happy to be interfered with by somebody 20 years his junior. So he'll do nothing about his boyfriend. Somebody else has to step into the fray and do it for him. Fortunately, none of us own our own houses, so when we get sued after that, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, it's interesting that one of the article you referred to, Nori, uh, in the Times, uh, which kind of was a, one of the writers, is Mark McLaughlin, who is the hyena at uh, today's, he's there on the presser. He's the one that asks the most provocative questions at the I, I think that I can't remember who wrote about it, but somebody wrote today about um, this, the, the mainstream media not jumping on the schisms that are appearing in the SNP. Um, and social media but, thought that was because it was the wrong sort of schism. Yeah. I would have thought this was right up their street. Yeah, well, that's apart from this article, which was referenced on Saturday, wasn't it, in the Times? Uh, that highlighted Joanna Sherry's position, except that they, you know, Joanna Sherry really did. I felt that it was a, a, a sl another slanted attack, as well as the actual, the dodgy letter well, that you mentioned on on Friday's show, Jimmy. Yeah, well, it was factually incorrect. The the article that came out on Saturday it said that um, Nicola Sturgeon had stopped Joanna Sherry going into an NEC meeting by a phone, and it wasn't. That was the actions of someone who worked in SMP HQ. So the Times had to backtrack and had to apologise for it. When I first saw the article, I thought, oh, that's a misstep by Joanna. And given her how clever her article had been on Friday, and I think the Scotsman or the National, I think it was the National, I thought, that's a bit of a misstep, but I just didn't trust the article. It was Magnus Linklater, eh? They'll never trust a Linklater. They've got a bad name for misrepresenting Scots, haven't they? <laughs> so do we think this is going to escalate do we think there'll be any punishment meted out for abusing fellow members of the SNP to the woke fraternity I doubt it I think they'll try and sweep it all under the carpet mate I think they'll try and keep it quiet and 
I'd imagine that Alan Smith behind the scenes will be asked to either get his boy toy to wind his neck in or disassociate himself from him. Well, create some kind of distance. Apparently, Jordan has protected his Twitter account. So you can only presume that there's something that he doesn't want seen. It's not, I mean, this guy's there's been some very, there's some very strange stuff goes on in Sterling. Come on, Mr. Smith apparently loves to be called Daddy. That's a worry, isn't it? Aye. Right, there's some very strange goings on. Did you hear about, of course, the presenter at the, at the uh, Haley Matthews, the presenter at the conference? Uh, she briefly had a bit of a headlining job when STV actually had Edinburgh News. Um, real Edinburgh news. They uh, turns out she's been the presenter on stage. There is a bit of a stage, a real stage at this virtual conference, and it turns out she's a support, an anti-vaxxer. So she supports QAnon. Oh, this is the woman that's just publicly came out and said she'd be happy to get the vaccination and her children to be vaccinated. That one. She, is that so she can get paid at the end of the for the well, job? Well. I I haven't seen any anything anywhere where she's anti where she has said that can be attributed to her, but apparently um, Nicola well apparently Nicola said today at the the presser that quoted her as saying she'd be happy to get vaccinated. Mm, well, right. there, there are some strange there are some strange things going on on Tinterweb at the moment. Eh? Some of the Q and on stuff that popped up is quite astonishing. I keep an eye on that save in Scotland just to give myself a wee giggle of a morning because some of the fruit loops on there. There's a boy there, Pierce Donnelly, who's absolutely convinced that his microwave ovens try to kill him. He's convinced that it's ra- he's, he's absolutely certain it's radiation poisoning. There's a nuclear war going on the weekend, nothing about, and this is all radiation poisoning. The boys are total fruit loop. Well, look, just going back to the, the conference, I thought Joanna's speech yesterday was remarkably restrained. Uh, she, you know, we 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 talked about Joanna's approach. Whether she's coming, you know, uh, her words are usually very very careful. She is a lawyer after all, and she's still been practicing, isn't she? I'm. I'm not. I, I'm sort of not sure what she's up to. Um, part of me thinks she's setting herself up for a leadership bid down the road. Um, part of me thinks she wants to be a real rebel, but is not quite there yet. And part of me thinks she's just really hacked off with the abuse. Uh, yeah. yeah I think you're probably quite right there, mate. Particularly, the abuse is obviously taking its toll. Um, some of the stuff that she said to these women is horrific. Um, we've also got uh, Peter A. Bell, who's post this morning. He's almost given up. It's, he's called it hope, but he, by, by that he really means that he's almost lost hope for the uh, likely any quick move. I mean, are we expect? What are we expecting from the first minister this afternoon? She's suddenly going to announce a really firm plan to go no, for independence no, she, next year. She's not going to announce a firm plan. She's going to stick with a section thirty. Um, and the most you'll get out of her is a commitment that in the manifesto will be a promise. And that promise will be because she can't promise anything. It's not within her gift. She did say on uh, radio this morning, I don't know which one it was, I can't remember. It might have been Beth Rigby, but um, she did say that we haven't yet tested this in the courts. Mm. So no, it's, n- it's noticeable that the last couple of days she's also started using the phrase that she takes her instruction from the people of Scotland. I think I've heard her use it three or four times. It's an interesting turn of phrase that she's not used before, but maybe it's just a, a nice bit of window dressing given the discussions on the sovereignty of the people in this country. You know what I mean? Maybe it's just a new catchphrase that somebody came up with for her. If you reflect, if you add that to the Professor John Curtis's article, who describes his analysis of 
the, the, the makeup of the people that support the SNP and how much the people who support independence has moved. The people who now support the SNP are a larger percentage of people that want independence. There used to be quite a lot of people that didn't want independence, still voted SNP, but that's changed. That's just John Curtis trying to muddy the waters to keep his job with the BBC. Come on, I, remember, he's, remember he's an arch unionist, John Curtis, so you take everything that he says with a pinch of salt. He's brilliant at reading an exit poll, but that doesn't make him a bloody expert in anything else. I I do think there's there's been a change. You know, I mean, I, I do, I get the impression that a lot of people who I wouldn't call unionists, but definitely status quoists have now changed because the status quo does not look good. And right. I, th I think that's going to be the decider. So the, your, your status quo looks horrific when you look at a no-deal Brexit marching up the path. And Boris, they're still, I mean, London politicians are still spewing out the rhetoric of the Brexit campaign. Who was it yesterday? Oh, it escapes me, but one of them came out yesterday and said that the EU needs to bow to the inevitability of Britain leaving the European Union. The EU is not going to bow to anything. They have the negotiating position and nobody's moved in the last few weeks. I didn't expect any deal now. I think if there's a last minute deal, it's going to be catastrophically bad or it's going to be a catastrophically bad no deal. That's our two options. Then. If they don't do a deal on fishing, which apparently I heard this morning is the last outstanding issue, if they don't deal or do, do a deal on fishing, the first thing that will happen by the 3rd of January is that the uh, French fishermen will block the channel ports. Yeah. And uh, French fishermen can't block the channel ports, mate. They of course they've done it before. Uh, you'll forgive me, mate, but if the French fishermen try to block the channel ports, all you do is to attend a Type 23 frigate out there and they'll run for the French coast. They can I know, block they, the rain. They, they actually block the, they actually block Cali. They, block, they, they stop the ferries getting in and out. They just turn up in their fishing boats. They've done it before. I have, yeah. I don't know if they'd get away with it. I I was a bit surprised at one of the statistics that was thrown about this morning, that the French get 84% of the cod catch in the channel. Well, they probably if get I was a it. fisherman, I'd be hacked off about that. There's no lot of cod in the channel, is there? No. So they get most of catch the fish cod, you really need to be up in the North Sea. Uh, then most of the fish, they get most of the fish, that the fresh fish and the shellfish that gets caught in Scotland gets driven in lorries straight across the channel to the big uh, uh, wholesale market, apparently in Lille, in, Fr in northern France. Yeah, aye. And that, you know, they're beginning to now admit the dent it would have to the trade um, if there's, what is it, 25, 30% tariffs? Going to get just, slapped on it? Just if it gets slowed down, they can't sell steel fish. Yeah, true. It'll all be dead by the time it gets through the Kent car park. Well, we'll be eating fish and seed tatties. Oh, seed we'll tatties aren't very nice. Well, <laughs> that's, that's the big export from Scotland that might suffer because apparently mm. Scotland produces all the seed tatties for Europe. Do you think Biden's going to drop the tariff on Scotch whiskey? Because apparently that's been, been quite a big hole in it. Exports, isn't it? Well, I bet uh, a lot of somebody poured half a bottle down his neck when he fell over his dug and that'll give him, put him in a nice position to do so. <laughs> I, d I don't think Biden will be in a rush to do anything until he sees Ireland settled. Oh, yeah, he's very, he's very strong on that, isn't he? Um, so I wouldn't expect that tariff to... He might do it as a sort of friendship gesture, an undoing of the Trump's Trump... most idiot yeah. actions, because at the end of the day, Trump did chuck in some weird things into the tariffs, just for any particular reason. So, my, you might be right. Maybe somebody will just go and say, by the way, put a red pen through all that. Let's start again to a different basis. Well, he's got that option. I'd, I'd, or I'd, I've got a feeling he might simply turn around and say, right, everything back to reset right. to four years ago. Well, it's like, kind of the knows? buzzword of 2020, isn't it? When you, <laughs> if you avoid the pandemic, reset is the word in politics. Mm. So, anything else anybody had that particularly stuck in their mind today? I'm still waiting for the NEC results this afternoon. 
Aye, what time do you know? The vote, I know that voting closes at four, and presumably, if, I'd imagine that most people have already voted, so do we know when they'll actually publish these results? So this is a delegates-only vote, isn't it? Yeah. Is it? Yes. Yes. So there's, what, 600? 600 votes to count? I don't know. I've no idea. I thought, uh... I'm assuming that they already know, or they virtually know. They'll be tracking them. Eh? They'll know who's top of the list, so to speak. Remember when um, elections to the Labour NEC used to be a big thing? You'd get them on the bloody 6 o'clock news, didn't it? That's died off, eh? Well, that, that was the how you judged what colour the heart of the Labour Party was. Aye. Was it pink, red, or a pale Black. shade of blue? Well, are, are we not going to be making that judgment tomorrow on the results the NEC make up of the SNP? I think we will be. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm hoping we're wrong. I'm hoping that it's a win-win that even if the woke element get in, they read it as a warning shot, I hope. Um, what else? There was something else on today. Oh, yeah, the six o'clock podcast from Indie Radio. Yeah, that'll be an interesting watch. I'm, I'm intrigued to know why they didn't do it live. I'm also intrigued to know why it takes 24 hours to edit it. I think they might have been worried there was some throat biting going to happen. There's a very good reason we do a, what's us, we, our show is as live because it's uh, it, it takes a lot of work if you don't do it as live. Is that right, Nori? It does, yes. It Hell does. of a lot of work. Yeah, uh, a lot of time. A lot of time involved, and if, especially which is why we do it as live. It, I don't know if people know that. Huh. Um, I'd like think, to wish everybody. I think it's fairly obvious if you watch us that there's not a lot like, uh, Just to make sure, I'd like to um, wish everybody a, a, a good St Andrew's Day. I'm wearing the appropriate uh, shirt, and you probably see the flag in the background. I was wondering if unionists still celebrate St Andrew's Day. They do, because sure? as as you know. Um, St. Andrews was the uh, helpmate of St. George. He was well, we the told one, you that. He was the one that cleaned up all the shit from St. George's horse. Yeah, but St. George was actually a Turkish knight. That's not the point. He's an English patriot saint. So St. Andrews got to walk behind him with a all shovel right. and a bucket. I was thinking, if, if what can you call a Tory that's now still supporting uh, St Andrews and waving a salt tie? You could call him a, a Tartan Tory, because I don't think I don't think you could call the SNP that anymore. Whatever they're moving politically. By by, what does St Andrew do? Did he just get martyred? He was a disciple. Ah, uh, but was... what, I mean, what did he do? I know he got nailed to a soul tire shaped cross but hmm. I mean he didn't he kill dragons or chase snakes away or anything did he nah I, I'm assuming that he did he didn't get imbued with superpowers like George and Paddy did so maybe maybe he just actually run a boot and set up a few churches and like, like um, they were kind of met a day back then it's you interesting that we, we share our patron saint with the Russia they're also super, uh, celebrating St Andrew's Day today Aye, Aye, but but they're, we, they're celebrating it with a crapper drink than we are. But, <laughs> but we're, we're, you've got to remember, we've got very close ties to Russia. Oh, once upon a time. We used to send soldiers um, across there quite a lot. All across well, that's, the why, that's, what, that's why the bear aircraft keep coming over to wave at us and, that, and the daft English Aye. chase them away because they think it's still 1942 again. But they, uh, some of their, well, some of their, one of their greatest generals was a Scot. He was indeed. And they're into Rabbi Burns. They like Rabbi. Oh, they're very keen on Rabbi. Mind you, I mean, Napoleon, one of his, his main generals was McDonald. Was a McDonald. Uh, well, hmm. McDonald will fight anybody. Mm. I think that I was about to say, I think that's because he stopped taking his medication. Oh, the McDonald. Aye. Uh, well, the McDonald's were Lord, Lords of the Isles, were they not? Were they not? Well, uh, Yes, yes, Vikings, I, basically. Yeah, well, good. And so were the Russians. In fact, the Russian state was really was really um, established by uh, Vikings. Didn't you know that? No, I didn't know that. Um, and 
these uh, ridiculous programs that I watch on um, Netflix, etc. Neil Oliver? That show, no, they, these are like fantasy Maybe things Neil Oliver. that show the Vikings invading Russia and the Russians invading Viking land. So the Vikings, they, 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 they traded their way right through Russia. Think about the Eastern Europe and Russia. I believe, they got, I believe they got as far as the Mediterranean. Yeah, well, they got all the way down to um, Istanbul, which used to be Constantinople in those days. And, uh, I'm pretty traded. sure when the Vikings were kicking about, God only knows what Istanbul was doing, but it'd be a bit warm for a Viking down there, they'd be eh? and They were trading all the way down there because the you think about these long rivers, the Volga, the Volga, is it the Volga? I have no idea. My the geography, Volga. my <laughs> geography outside Scotland is. There are big rivers in Eastern Europe that, that you can use for for a thing with boats like the, the Vikings had. Anyway, no, it, it, the Rus, as they were called, was the other name for the Vikings. They they caught the Russia was begun by the Vikings. Um, Even I'm bored now. Can we knock it on the head? I think I, so. I, th I think so. So, to look forward to the NEC result um, and the indie live podcast of our bloggers, bloggers against Wished for indie. Wished Is that for accurate? Indie. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Well, that's at six o'clock, by the way, folks. The uh, podcast on indie live. Our our favourite radio station, rather than Broadcasting Scotland. Uh, I don't know. They did all right today, I have to say, the BBC. Um, okay. Thanks for joining us, Jimmy. Me, uh, mate. Thanks for being with us, Stuart. Video. I'm Norrie Stuart. Thanks for listening, folks. And we'll catch up with you tomorrow, where we might have a whole new NEC in the SNP. And then again, we might not. So we'll find out later today, hopefully. Cheers for now, folks. Thanks for listening.